So I'm just going to go ahead and drive on. So unless you've been living under a rock, uh, we just had a wannabe mass murderer show up uh, in rural or Midwest America at a mall in Greenwood, which apparently, apparently Greenwood is not very far from Indianapolis. Greenwood, Indiana. And uh, it was the same MO as, the, as that, uh, that shite bag down there in uh, uh, Parkland. It was the same MO as the Uvalde guy. I don't know who's training these guys. I don't know who's putting this in their heads, uh, but same MO. Went out, bought a bunch of expensive AR-15s. And, uh, and then decided he was going to commit a mass murder. Went to a gun-free zone. You're like, no, it wasn't gun-free because that guy was carrying a gun. Oh, the good guy, the good Samaritan actually was breaking the rules. Yes. Yes, you see, in Uvalde, that was a gun-free zone. And, uh, hey, just FYI, I'm uh, doing a live Facebook Live. Cool. So, uh, in Uvalde, it was a gun-free zone because everyone, you know, it's, it's a school and you have to obey and no one's going to be armed because guns are bad and guns are dangerous. And the worst possible thing we could have would be a teacher with a gun. I mean, that'd be the worst possible thing, right? So we had a situation in Indiana where the mall, by policy, was a no-weapons gun-free zone. So the scumbag, the murderer, went into the Indiana Mall believing that he was entering a, uh, well, a target-rich environment, a kill zone. He went in there believing that he was entering a kill zone. And the only reason, maybe the people who told him to go there, told him to go there because it was a kill zone, because they knew it was a gun-free kill zone. But the Good Samaritan didn't get that message. You see, the Good Samaritan that day was carrying. Uh, a gentleman named Eli Dickin. And Eli was carrying. Eli was only 22 years old. So lessons learned. Number one, gun-free zones don't protect you. Gun-free zones only protect criminals. They only protect psychotics. They only uh, protect terrorists. Because people who are predisposed to commit murder don't care if there's a plastic sign or a policy uh, you know, uh, the idea that someone who is willing to commit a homicide, a mass homicide, is not going to do it because there's a plastic sign on the door. They're like, well, I was going to commit this mass murder, but there's a plastic sign on the door, so now I'm not. And the people who you confront with this are like, oh, it's not for, it. it that's not what it is at all. It's, it's, it's to keep our visitors safe. How does it keep your visitors safe? Because no one wants to be in a place where there are guns. Yeah, but we just, we've just we just demonstrated time and time and time and time again. The NRA did a survey. They, they, they used the FBI's own stats. And 94% of mass murder killings happen in designated gun-free zones. Uh, 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 okay. Number one, don't let plastic signs disarm you. Don't let plastic signs disarm you. Uh, you are responsible for yourself. End of story. So what do we see in the gun-free zone in Uvalde versus the gun-free zone in Indiana? In Indiana, someone ignored the sign and was armed anyway. In Indiana, they pulled the security tapes, and there's, there's actually stories out there. There's actually news stories. They pulled the tapes and they were able to use the second by second timestamp from the security tapes. And they saw this kid come out of the bathroom, this 20 year old a hole, comes out of the bathroom with his AR 15 that he, that somebody apparently gave him a bunch of money and he went and bought, bought two of them. What is it with them buying two anymore? I don't understand that. But uh, starts shooting, comes out picks up his gun or shoots from the hip. I don't know. I didn't see the video. And within 15 seconds, one, two, three, within 15 seconds, Eli Dickin, a 22 year old citizen who was breaking the rules by actually having a gun there 
realized what was going on, moved toward the threat, not away from it. As he was moving towards the threat, gave instructions for people to get away, to get behind him, drew his gun, engaged, and put that guy, neutralized the threat in 15 seconds. Yes, three people died. Three innocent people died. How many innocent people would be dead now? And, and the Democrat scumbag liberal leftists would be dancing in the blood of the innocent. You know they have to be having a bad day. They're having a bad week. Because an American citizen, not a police officer, not a member of the government, not a government agent, but a, just an, a citizen, and a young citizen, a young citizen did what was right, had the courage to stop a murderer. I thought you can't stop. You can't stop someone with an AR with only a handgun. You can't. He just did it. He just did it. And there's proof, and everyone knows about it, and they can't hide it. And they're like, well, three innocent people still died. Three innocent people still died. Yeah, they were going to anyway. More than that. So what would you like, liberal leftist, Democrat, scumbag, communist? Would you like more dead? Well, we need to, this proves we need to ban guns. Like they do in, China, like in, in Japan, where the whole country is a gun-free zone, and the prime minister just got shot to death. Evil people are going to get weapons, and they're going to do evil things. Regardless of signs, regardless of policies, it's going to happen. The only way to deal with evil people, with evil intent, is for a righteous man to stop them. That's it. And part, part, the other part of lesson one is you have to be there, right there, when it's happening to affect a positive change. If you wanna affect a positive outcome, you have to be there. Only the people who are present when the attack, the terrorist attack, we saw this at the Westgate Mall. We've seen this, you know, we saw it at the, uh, the, the uh, was it Whitehall Baptist Church or White, the, the White Settlement Church in Texas, where Guy whips out a gun, and a good guy with a gun, who is church security, shoots him and stops him in seconds. Only the people who are present in the building when the terrorist attack starts are going to be able to affect any kind of positive change. I don't care how fast the 911 response is. I don't care. I mean, think about it. 15 seconds, you couldn't even dial the phone, get 911 on there, and tell them where to go, how to get there in 15 seconds. By the time they pick up and say, 911, what's your emergency? You tell them who you are, where you are, and that you need police. You're not even done with the phone call. You couldn't even be done with a 911 call before this kid, this, and I call him kid because I'm an old guy, this young man smoked this turd into the ground and he resumed room temperature. So the people who are not there, who are coming, oh, they're gonna come, and they'll be there eventually. They might be there in minutes, 10, 15, 20, half hour, maybe. Now look at Uvalde. Maybe they'll sit outside in the parking lot, or they'll stage in the hallway for 77 minutes. 77 minutes, yeah. So we had an untrained, now he might have had firearms training, I don't know where he got firearms training, um, but he was not a police officer, he wasn't former police, he wasn't military, he was a citizen who got his own training, he bought his own gun and got his own training without the state's approval. Oh, without the approval or the blessing of the state, a citizen saved lives. Now look at Uvalde. They just released a, uh, the, the Texas, the state of Texas is investigating. And they found a lot of problems. Imagine that. Not only did Uvalde send everybody there, that Uvalde PD, but all the local agencies sent people there. By the time it was over with, Uvalde was a cop convention. There was 376 cops present at that elementary school 
by the time it ended an hour and a half later. All the cops who showed up and were in the hallway had rifles and were wearing body armor. But they didn't go in. They let the killing continue for an hour and 15 minutes. A 22-year-old young man armed only with a pistol, no armor, no radios, no backup, stopped the killer by himself, did the right thing. Dozens and dozens of heavily armed, fully armed and trained police officers stood around and did nothing while children bled to death. You have to be, you have to be armed and ready to go in the place when it happens. Because if you're waiting for someone to come from the outside to save you, it's not going to happen. They'll show up eventually, but they're not going to show up in enough time to stop you from being slaughtered, to stop innocent people from being slaughtered. Only the people present at that time will be able to stop it. Not 911, not police 10 minutes away, or even five minutes away. Five minutes is a long time for a mass murderer. Well, then we should just wave a magic wand and make all the AR-15s go away. There weren't any AR-15s in Columbine. There was none. There was zero. Columbine happened five years into the Gun-Free Schools Act. Columbine happened five years after the signing of the Great Assault Weapons Ban. Columbine, that, see, the left doesn't want to talk about that. How Columbine happened five years into the assault weapons ban, and it still happened. What happened was not supposed to happen because they passed new laws. In Columbine, the cops surrounded the building and waited, and the slaughter continued. We were supposed to learn after Columbine, but we didn't. So part one, lesson one, don't be disarmed by plastic signs or idiot policies. Carry your gun. You are responsible for your life and the life of innocent people who are around you. Lesson number two, just because the noise stops doesn't mean the fight is over. Just because the noise stops doesn't mean the fight is over. If there was a bunch of loud noises, bang, 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 and now it stops, they're, still gonna, they're probably going to be people bleeding. How fast can you bleed to irreversible shock? You can bleed to irreversible shock if you get an artery clipped in an arm or a leg. You can bleed to irreversible shock in minutes. And I don't mean 15 or 20, I mean four or five. An open artery in a leg or an arm will bleed you into irreversible shock in four to five minutes. Sometimes, maybe less if it's a, if it's a full femoral, if the, fo if the femoral's cut completely, less than five. Irreversible shock means this. Irreversible shock means the ambulance guys might run in and they stop the bleeding and they pump you full of fluids and they take you to the hospital and you die anyway. Why? Because once your organs, livers, kidneys, you know, all the important stuff, once your organs inside, when they're no longer getting oxygenated blood, they shut down. Livers, kidneys, all that, they're like, we're done. We're done. Can you live without a liver? No. Can you live without your kidneys? Two kidneys, can you live without them? No. Irreversible shock, that's why people turn, you know, they get to the hospital, they were in a bad accident, a crash, they, they saved them, got them to the hospital, put all kinds of whole blood in them. Here's the thing, if you have a, a liver that has been denied oxygen and it dies and it's dying and you pour whole blood on it, doesn't matter. It's not gonna come back to life. That's why they call it irreversible shock because nothing that you do can stop it. What happens when one of these mass shooters, well, first of all, the cops don't run in because they're like, there might be multiple shooters we can't just run in. we got to take our time and stage and, and, and go slow and communicate and talk on our walkie-talkies and all that. And we'll get in there eventually. Well, while they're screwing around arguing over who has jurisdiction, the shot people are bleeding to death on the floor. Uvalde. 
teacher, one of the teachers that died, was shot, was on the floor bleeding to death. The guy apparently thought, I shot her, I'm good to go, I'm going to go shoot other people. She calls on her phone, calls her husband, who's a cop, and says, I'm dying. He tries to get in there. They disarm him and remove him from the building. Did you know that? Because if you didn't, you should know it and be pissed. The teacher who died, who made the phone call, didn't have to die. She shouldn't have died. Because if she was shot and bleeding and able to call for help, she could have been saved by rapid traumatic medicine. She could have been saved. But she wasn't saved because the cowardly, traitorous scum on Uvalde PD and all the others stood out in the hallway and made sure she bled to death on that floor. How many people in Parkland, how many people in Parkland who are victims could have been saved by the rapid application of medical treatment? How many people who, uh, well, were shot but could have been saved in Uvalde died because they had to lay there and die in their own blood? Yeah. Okay, just because the noise stops doesn't mean the fight's over. There are people that need treatment and they need it right now. You, you, you know Student of the Gun, we've been preaching this literally for years. For years and years and years and years and years and years. This right here, Pocket Lifesaver, everything that you need to stop, to uh, stop gap a life-threatening injury, right? Everything except the needle. We don't put the needles in the basic kits. The needles are in the advanced kits. Tourniquet, gauze, tape, chest seal, you make it out of the package, gloves, this has one rat's tourniquet, one roll of gauze, three foot of duct tape, a KV sponge, an NPA nasal pharyngeal airway, and two gloves. Pocketlifesaver.com. Carry your gun. Carry medical gear. Yeah, I can't carry medical gear. It's too much. It's too big. It's a package. Da, 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 da. Can you, could you carry this? Could you put this in a pocket? Purse, briefcase, waist pack. Can, can you have this on you? You can't? Okay. Well, I know what I'm doing, and, and I can you make hasty gear. That's great. Improvised gear is great. But wouldn't it, if, you're gonna, if you're thinking, well, I, I know how to use improvised gear, wouldn't you be better off just using ready-made medical gear? Maybe. By their, by their criminal inaction and cowardice, Law enforcement officers in Parkland and in Uvalde guaranteed that injured people, and the media has this, that they died, that they bled to death. The media has this, they portray this, oh, you're shot with an AR-15, your lung blows out, and, 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 and no one survives being shot with an AR-15. Yes, they do. That woman who was called her husband, she was alive and cognizant enough after being shot to call on the phone. She could have been saved. Those scumbag cops in that hallway made her die. If Derek Chauvin in Minnesota, Minneapolis, had to go to prison for the death of George Floyd, those scumbags in that hallway in Uvalde are responsible for the deaths of those teachers and those students. They need to go to jail. Every one of them. They ensured those people bled to death. Those traitorous, cowardly cops in Parkland, ensured that those kids bled to death in there. They made sure they died through their criminal inaction. Where does that take us back? When we did the wet when we talked about the Westgate, the Nairobi, uh, Kenya Westgate Mall terrorist attack. We discussed this at length on Student of the Gun, and uh, one of the survivors told his story about how during the initial attack, his wife was injured and they were hiding under a table in a coffee shop or something. And he was holding her hand and he watched the light go out of her eyes because she just bled to death in front of her. And, you know, I'm, I'm watching this. I'm like, so your, your traumatic medical plan was to hold her hand? Well, no, Paul, what did you want him to do? Try and do some kind of first aid on her? Yeah. Why did she die? She bled to death because the police and the army were in the parking lot arguing over who had jurisdiction and which plan they were going to use. They're eventually going to go in, 
By the time they go in, the terrorists, the criminals, and the murderers are going to be out of ammo and bored and tired. Look at what happened in Parkland. They waited so long that the kid like ran out of ammo or whatever, threw his gun down, and walked out. Yeah. So part one, always carry your gun. Lesson number two, get training, carry medical gear. Get training, carry medical gear. Because in both situations, only the people who are there inside the building when the terrorist attack starts will be able to positively affect the outcome. You get it, right? You understand that, right? All right, lesson three, and this is the last one. Will is more important than skill. We've been saying it for years. Mindset, will, the desire to do something good, effective, righteous is more important than everything else. What do we see? Greenwood, Indiana, Uvalde, Texas. We saw the mindset of a 22 year old armed citizen with a pistol, no armor, no backup, nothing had the will to do what needed to be done. We had trained professionals. Remember, you and I aren't supposed to have guns because we're just stupid peasants, and the police are firearms experts, and they are the only ones that can be trusted with black rifles. Only the police can be trusted with black rifles. What did the police in Uvalde do with their black rifles? Stood around, checking their phones, sanitized their hands, whatever else they did for an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, will is more important than skill. Mindset, tactics, skill, gear. Eli Dickin in Greenwood, Indiana, had the will, the mindset to do what was right. Hello, beautiful. Beautiful, would you like to say hello to the world real quick? Hello, world. This is why I carry every day. Say hello, world. Hello, world. Say goodbye, world. Goodbye, world. Okay. <laughs> so final lesson. Number one, carry. Don't be disarmed by plastic signs. Number two, medical gear. Learn how to use it, carry it. Number three, will is more important than skill. The first police officer that had a chance to stop that maniac in Uvalde saw him and didn't take a shot because he was afraid he would miss. Before he killed anyone, before the Uvalde murderer killed anyone, a police officer could have stopped him, but he didn't because he didn't have the will. He didn't have the mindset. We've got agents of the state standing around looking at their phones while children are bleeding to death on the floor. And then we have one 22-year-old kid who broke the rules by having a gun on him in the mall when their policy says you're not allowed to. Those are your lessons. There you go. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if you're not, I mean, I'm sure most of you, since you're a student of the gun audience, are probably already trained. We are doing uh, Beyond the Band-Aid uh, traumatic medical training. We do it often. We're doing it this weekend. We're going to have a whole big class of people this weekend. We will probably be doing a bunch of them in the Salt Lake City area. Salt Lake City, Utah. You, know, you mean not the other Salt Lake? No, but... Uh, uh, if you are in the general vicinity of Salt Lake City and you'd like to get in one of our uh, traumatic medical classes, uh, pay attention, follow us. Uh, go to SOTGU.com and sign up and follow and all that stuff. And then in August, we have a precision range, long range precision rifle class in Wyoming. We're going to stretch it out to at least 1,000 yards, probably 1,400. That's going to be fun. going to be a good time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, there you go. That's Those are the facts, the facts that are being ignored by the legacy mainstream scumbag media, the fact that nobody can seem to get their, he their, their heads around, but law enforcement agencies. And never forget that the head of the Indiana State Police uh, was 100% against constitutional carry in Indiana. He lobbied against the bill. 
because it was going to be it was going to be dangerous and and, and uh, a hazard for public safety and no 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 no. Someone needs to go find that scumbag and, and interview him and ask him how he feels now. How do you feel about armed citizens now, scumbag? You th- still think that they're a threat? Mm. Yeah, exactly. The, the, the only, I guess, silver lining or good news out of this is that Americans, is that the, the left and the Democrats cannot hide this story. They can't hide it. They cannot hide the fact that a good guy, a citizen, not a cop, not an agent of the state, not trained and blessed by the state, used his gun to save lives, and there's no doubt about it. And they can't hide that. They'll spin it, and they'll try and pretend it didn't happen, but it did happen, and Americans are going to see it. So, there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, thank you for being here. I truly appreciate it. Share this on your little channel so other people can see it. I'm your host, Paul Markle. Remember, you're a beginner once. You should be a student for life.